Well, here's something a little different from Paleo Man. Um, back in the early to mid 90s, I was quite involved in um, beads, all kinds of beads, trade beads, uh, beads that I, I made beads myself out of catlinite. And what you see in this uh, first frame here are beads that I made uh, using Minnesota pipe stone. Made all the beads you see here, and this necklace in the middle. I actually wear that one still quite often, and it's taken on quite a luster from uh, uh, the body oils, you know, that absorbed into it. But uh, I'll start out here with some, should kind of give you an overview of some of the beads I still have from my uh, Mountain Man days. Uh, these are kind of a really cheap. Um, I'm not too proud of these, but they're kind of cool. Uh, these chevrons are very poorly made, I would say, and nothing like the old originals. But I got them when I was at uh, Herkimer Diamond Mines, and I saw a strand for pretty reasonable, and I thought, ah, they look good hanging in my man cave. So then here's a uh, here's some very massive beads right here. This is uh, these are actually clay that's been baked, and uh, these are Hudson Bay beads right here, big, huge blue beads. Um, Got those from a friend one time. We were doing some bartering, and he uh, he traded those to me for who knows what. And uh, next to that are some beads that I got in the fur trade uh, time when I was um, doing the mountain man scene and all that. And some of these are pretty darn good. You know, these yellow heart uh, tubes here, they're big. And uh, there's some skunk beads here. They call these red and white ones. And uh, then I got a, another strand here, and look at this. This is a really good bead right here. Yeah, Pa inspired me when he did that uh, little thing on his beads that he had, that he's found. Now here's some Lewis and Clark beads. Look at the size of this one. These are not old ones, but I think they're pretty nice. And they would look good on anybody's necklace. Got quite a few here. And uh, some of these here, if you, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a lot of translucency to them. They're, they're beautiful beads. I, I absolutely love the Lewis and Clark bead. And uh, I've always kept those. These guys though, I made those. And uh, now we're getting into the, excuse me, a little more uh, modern stuff. Although this one here was a gift from a friend who was a mountain man. Um, there's some malachite stones uh, in between shells. And it's nicely made. And this was something that he got at a fur trade camp and traded to me. He put it together a couple of little antler tines here for effect. But uh, these next, well, of course, then there's your typical sand cast beads here. And they're, they're kind of nice. You can get these still. Um, you can see they're strung up with grass. A lot of these come right out of Africa. And uh, they string them on grass, sell them. Pretty reasonably priced, but uh, these beads here and here and these two strands and this one strand of singular beads was made by my daughter's um, brother-in-law. Uh, her her husband actually was involved in making glass beads, and uh, her husband's I guess it's uh, it's always hard for me to remember how this goes, but uh, he's an uncle to her husband and these are bead of the month you know this represents snow you can see a blizzard like and this is February which is the Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day has got a shamrock and this is supposed to be like an Easter egg for April and then uh, this is May when flowers grow and sunny blue skies with clouds for June and then this is the color of fireworks green and uh, for August and I'm not sure what exactly all of them represent but this one's pretty cool obviously that one is October because there's the Halloween bead and these colors are for Thanksgiving and of course this is the festive uh, December bead which um, would represent Christmas of course and uh, he also made this strand that I got in an auction at our nap in one time and uh, I was insisting I was going to get it no matter what it cost because every bead is handmade and this is the very first strand of beads that I got from him and I tell you he does a great job making beads I've watched him do it he's done it here at my home 
and uh, anytime I get a chance I, I try to get beads from here here's another mixed bag of beads this one though is personalized but you can see this one's got my initials on this bead KW and he made that strand just for me for a barter that we did and there's a special bead down here and then I got this one off him somehow. I can't remember some trade or whatever. But anyway, that's a, a look at some of the beads that I've got. Um, I absolutely love glass beads, uh, sand cast, you know, clay, whatever. Actually, there's another two or three strands in there I failed to bring out that were uh, terracotta that I got in a trade. And they're beautiful. Every one of them is decorated uh, individually. A lady made them. And I got them in a round robin at a Mountain Man uh, event. So... Anyway, here's a look at beads uh, in Paleo Man's world, and I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's not for everybody, but uh, beads are addicting once you get into them. Uh, you just want to keep getting more and more, and, and uh, they're very interesting. There's a whole variety of things you can get involved in with beads. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back with something else. Download some podcasts of Kimberly and Peck at Rochester.